a genuine partnership with communities with goals to improving educational opportunities and ensuring that children are safe and protected from all forms of abuse, receive adequate care and grow up in a protective environment, promoting improvement of health services and accessibility, enabling accessibility to safe clean water and better sanitation, ensuring food security and developing income generating capabilities for economic empowerment of the poor and vulnerable people all geared towards transforming the lives of children and their communities in Uganda over the past 30 years a commitment of world vision uganda an organization with a christian identity from 1980 to 1986 The central part of Uganda, codenamed Luero Triangle, was devastated by war. The five-year war ended with hundreds of lost lives, properties and social infrastructure destroyed. The dire need for relief intervention attracted many relief agencies to this area, key among them was World Vision International. Uh, so one of the early achievements for World Vision here in Uganda was to ensure that the people who are affected by the war are able to uh, find a life again after the war. World Vision partnered with government and communities to roll out its interventions. Construction of schools, hospitals and general support to children's education was among the top priorities. The organization supported the construction of more than 19 schools across the entire Luero Triangle. All those districts that had been affected by war by constructing schools, uh, teachers' houses, and providing books and school fees for children because we didn't have universal primary education at that time. Indeed, the fruits of child sponsorship have positively manifested phenomenally over the past 30 years. Vincent Kamiachobe is the head teacher of Nachikonge Primary School in Nakaseke District. He was one of the needy student beneficiaries for grade 3 primary teachers training course. I'm very grateful. Because if it wasn't what vision I had even lost the hope of uh, upgrading of even continuing with my studies. So but when what vision came in looking for clever strength what passed and he interested in teaching I just came in. World Vision's intervention into Chobe's life has not only impacted him as an individual It has resonated into the community inspiration. What well, vision helped me a lot. I'm now a man. I tell you that I'm now a model in the community. Support to critically disadvantaged families with children and orphans to acquire decent shelter was an important aspect of World Vision's Home Packs post-war program. Modest houses were built with the agency's subsidy supplemented by beneficiaries' input. 35-year-old Madrin Bidabwa together with her five siblings and her ailing mother was salvaged from a one-roomed shack to a decent two-bedroomed house. We were sleeping in this one-roomed house. Six people with our mother, chickens, foodstuffs and every household item. It is for this reason that Madrin breaks down in grief when she recollects the situation World Vision rescued her from. Because this is the small house that our mother had left us in. I can't imagine that we would still be in that house. Rehabilitation and restoration of healthcare services was another vital intervention. Working together with the local communities, World Vision supported the construction of more than 12 health units across Greater Luweero. Ensuring access to clean safe water was very crucial to prevent the population especially the children from contracting waterborne diseases. This is Kasensero, a landing site on Lake Victoria, Rakai district. A place widely believed to have been the epicenter of the AIDS pandemic in the early 1980s subsequently spreading to the entire district. Thousands of adults died, leaving a daunting number of orphans, child-headed families, and enormous poverty. And as we moved around villages, there were almost entire villages that were full of graves and abandoned homes, and and there were elderly grandparents that had five, ten, sometimes fifteen grandchildren because they had lost all their children. 
They didn't have medical care. They didn't have shelter. They're not being, being they're not going to school. It was very, very pathetic. And so World Vision was attracted to start interventions in Rakai and Masaka that provided HIV AIDS counseling, that included HIV AIDS education, also helped children get food, but also helping them to grow their own food. We built schools so that they could have an education. We constructed health centers and equipped them. Some of these young people could no longer cope with higher education because they had the burden of taking care of young ones. So we constructed uh, vocational skills training so that they could learn and be able to get a skill and earn an income. For close to 15 years, Northern Uganda was plunged into an insurgency caused by the rebels of Joseph Kony's Lord's Resistance Army. Many people lost their lives, property destroyed, while thousands were displaced and forced to live a life of squalor in the internally displaced people's camps. It is against this background that World Vision in 1993 expanded its operations to the conflict areas of northern Uganda. Children and women whose homes were close to Gulu town had to abandon them every evening and trek to town to spend nights in makeshift shelters that were provided by World Vision and other humanitarian agencies for fear of being abducted, a phenomenon that was referred to as night commuting. The most devastating catastrophe was the abduction of children by the rebels for conscription into their ranks. By 2007, when the war subsided, over 25,000 children had been abducted and turned into child soldiers. Under its Uganda Children of War Rehabilitation Program, World Vision Uganda set up a reception center in Gulu to receive and counsel children before being reunited with their families and reintegrated into the communities. To ensure that we rehabilitate them, uh, to ensure they're able to engage back with their own communities or brought back into their communities, accepted in their own communities, uh, to establish families. In its post-war intervention program, World Vision continued giving support to the people of northern Uganda by empowering them with livelihood projects. Formerly abducted people were mobilized into forming groups that were subsequently supported with farming tools and ox plows. With 54 members, Wakemokwene Group in Lukwir Parish, Lalogi Sub-County, Gulu District, using oxen and plows provided by World Vision, have opened a total of 84 acres of land on which they have been cultivating bins and simsim for both sale and consumption in their homes. Charles Lukwir, who spent 15 years in abduction, is the leader of the group who has ripped benefits. I used my share from the group by myself, Oxen, which I rent out for money. This money has helped me to pay school fees for both my own children and my late brothers. The war led to a major breakdown in the provision of social services. Education infrastructure was destroyed, leaving children with only the option of studying under trees. In Oyam district, one of the areas that was hard hit by the war, World Vision worked in partnership with communities in Abbeer Sub County to put up classroom blocks in a number of schools aimed at improving and providing the children with a conducive learning environment. Decent staff quarters have been constructed to keep the teachers within the school premises for punctuality and increasing more contact hours between teachers and the pupils. Since I am now near the school, I am now able to go to the school very early. That is one. Two, I am able to prepare my lessons also in time. I am also able to help the pupils very well because before this uh, instead of helping the pupils up to the expected time if it is now afternoon I would be, I would be thinking of now riding back home Mango. Justin, do Undoubtedly, you know, World Vision's I education post-war intervention program in parts of northern Uganda has had a remarkable impact that is widely acknowledged and appreciated when we compare the sub-counties where World Vision is working in, especially Abe, 
we find that um, the ADP of a bear is one of the best performing sub-counties in the whole of uh, Oyam. And uh, it is performing very well compared to those sub-counties where wild vision is not working in. The same is also in uh, Chaba, ADP Chaba, which is also doing very well. And uh, our performance is not only in uh, PLE grade 1, but if we take out grade 1, grade 2 and grade 3, we find that over 90% of our children are now passing. Provision of water and sanitation to the returnees' population was another crucial element in World Vision's post-war intervention programs in northern Uganda. Under the WASH program, a number of water sources in form of boreholes and protected springs were established to avail communities with safe, clean water to reduce diseases arising from use of the unsafe water. An example is this one in Lakoya village, Lalogi village, Gulu district, which serves 84 households who previously used to share pond water with animals. In 2010, World Vision Uganda launched its water, sanitation and hygiene program. The program has been implemented in 10 area development programs covering northern, western and central Uganda, where World Vision works with families and communities to access clean water and improved sanitation facilities. This community borehole in Karukadong village in Kotido district was drilled to help the community members access clean water in the Karamoja semi-arid region. Today, the residents do not have to walk two kilometers away to a well they shared with livestock. This development has tremendously contributed to the reduction of illnesses related to using unsafe water. Many wells require significant investment, an expensive drilling rig and a crew to run it. Imagine creating a clean water source for a community in a short period of time at an affordable price. This is what World Vision's WASH program envisioned when it started an innovative project to train communities to dig their own shallow wells and equip them with a hand pump. This pump scores very highly in terms of the affordability. It's like the name says, it's low cost. We have communities who cannot get safe water just because the drilling equipment cannot reach them because of streams, because of, you know, bad roads, you know. You see how they came here. You can just put all the drilling equipment on a bicycle. You ride the following day, you are drilling. In Gulu, the project identified and trained local entrepreneurs with small welding and drilling businesses to enable them fabricate the necessary parts and have a thorough working knowledge of a rope pump and manual drilling technology. The low-cost shallow wells have increased the number of people who have access to safe and clean water. Charles Watmon is one of the beneficiaries in Koro Sub County who opted to share with the community around his homestead. Community around me is so excited, especially mothers. You know, mothers used to stay a long time going down to fetch water, leaving children behind. But now mothers are together with their children so they can just come and fetch water from here and they go home. And so they have more time even to care for their children now. Together with access to clean water, World Vision has worked with communities under the community-led Total Sanitation Drive, WASH's aspect of hygiene and sanitation, an innovative approach for mobilizing communities to build their own latrines with tippy taps and put an end to open defecation. Awakara village, Abim district, was one of the villages in the region that has been declared open defecation free following a sensitization drive by World Vision against the practice. Before World Vision came to our village, we were defecating in an open place. But now they came and taught us how to use a latrine and how to build it, how to use a tippy tap, bad shelter, drain racks. But now we don't have any more diseases like it was diarrhea disturbing us. WASH has paid particular attention to schools in a bid to improve the facilities used by the pupils. This is aimed at ensuring good hygiene that would prevent illnesses among children from sanitation-related causes. School children and their teachers have facilitated access to improved sanitation facilities by constructing improved VIP latrines and installing hand-washing facilities. 
The WASH project implemented in schools has greatly taken great strides to meeting the national peat latrine stance ratio of 1 to 40 pupils. When you plot a graph, you will see that there is a very good trend in reduction of water and sanitation related diseases in the community because of such intervention. Well, with other stakeholders and the district in that particular direction, we have done significant improvement in that line. And uh, you are aware that even people from South Sudan, they come here to get food because our community are healthy, they are productive. In its 30 years of operation in Uganda, World Vision has actively participated in emergency responses involving refugees and natural catastrophes. This is a Yellow Camp 1, a refugee settlement sheltering refugees running away from the outbreak of violence in South Sudan. Aware of the complexities of most disasters, World Vision has partnered with government and other relief agencies to maximize the speed and effectiveness of its response to the affected populations. We have been able to deliver that hope. We have been able to wipe the tears from these people in distress with World Vision standing by our side. In 1995, World Vision Uganda adopted the area development approach. By 2015, World Vision was operating in 40 districts with 50 development programs. And this was deemed as the most appropriate way of delivering interventions. The issue of uh, ADP programs focuses more on community participation, long-term commitment to the community, but also ensuring that the community and the other stakeholders own the development process so that World Vision just facilitates uh, that process to achieve uh, the long-term uh, impact in those communities. Many organizations rush to a place only when it is captured in headlines. But World Vision stays even after headlines. World Vision stays beyond headlines. And that's what makes a big difference. And I want to thank the board of World Vision and through you thank the managers of World Vision that they have stuck in some of those areas today to see the community, first of all, at the time of relief. They have seen the community at the time of recovery. They are now engaging the community at the level of development. About 70% of Uganda's population is dependent on agriculture as the main source of livelihood. World Vision has worked with communities to improve household incomes to enhance household livelihoods. Farmer groups in various ADPs have been equipped with knowledge and skills and supported with firm implements and seeds to enable them improve their production volumes. The 18-member Budumba Community Development Forum in Butaleja District, Eastern Uganda, was one such group that received World Vision support. Improving agriculture skills of vulnerable households in communities for sustainable farming and marketing is a World Vision component under the food security and community resilience that targets the most vulnerable households. This is aimed at attaining capacity of households to sustainably improve their livelihood and be able to eat at least two meals a day, as well as raise money to meet household needs, children's health care and education. World Vision provides support in form of agriculture inputs and improved farming methods to enable them improve production. Lozio Nakabali, a beneficiary in Kayabu Mpiji district, has been able to transform his household livelihood with modest support of farm inputs as little as 5 kilograms of beans. I received 5 kilograms, which subsequently yielded 2 sacks. This has enabled me to get food for the children and the entire family enjoyed a good diet. World Vision's effort to improve livelihood of vulnerable households recognizes the importance of women's role in sustaining families. It supports women to participate actively in village savings and loan associations where they are empowered with microfinance services to enhance their socio-economic development. Budusu Yinuyauna Gogende, a village saving group in Butaleja district, is one of these groups that have been able to raise money through savings and credit. The VSLA lends out money to their members at a very low interest rate and at the end of the cycle, they share the dividends generated. This has boosted their household investments for the future. 
Jennifer Wandera runs a village grocery in Kamotia Trading Center, Butaleja. She has been able to grow her business following the loan she received from the group. I borrowed 800,000 shillings and used it to stock the shop, as you can see. Part of the profit goes into servicing the loan. The rest goes to my children's school fees. Ensuring delivery of services at the community level has been a challenging issue for the government. Yet, communities are entitled to access these services. World Vision Citizens Voice in Action program is an empowerment approach which enables local communities by providing them information and opportunity to dialogue and negotiate reforms in the delivery of services at the community level. Community members in Nkosi ADP in Pigi District teamed up to improve and develop infrastructure for health. As a result, this health facility, Nindia Health Center 3 in Kayabwe, was constructed with a maternity ward ultrasound scan and is stalked with drugs. The upgrading of Nindia Health Center is one classic example where World Vision Citizens' voice and action approach is enabling community members in other ADPs across the country demand their entitlement and accountability from government. Community demand accountability uh, for, from the stakeholders who are supposed, who are custodians of their resources, of the things that they contributed to. Uh, that one has actually improved uh, greatly. First of all, their demand for services is, is high, but also it puts a considerable amount of pressure on us to do the best for the community because they feel this is their own. Umeme. Umeme. The impact of World Vision's intervention on communities in Uganda in the past 30 years cannot be emphasized enough. The greatest achievement for World Vision here in Uganda is that through the past 30 years we have been able to give hope to communities which otherwise they would not be having that hope uh, and that is in many aspects of their lives. As a board I want to feel comfortable that we have implemented our values which would include we are responsive. We responded to bad situations and we have brought people out of that. We are accountable that for all the 30 years we have been able to grow our budgets from less than two digit figures, that is less than 10 million dollars, to now touching in excess of 100 million dollars a year. That means you have not only delivered the programs, but you have also maintained the confidence of the people you have partnered with who are committing their resources that they have seen the value that which they expected to come out of the army. Because at the board level, we want to protect those. From mitigating HIV AIDS prevalence and supporting people living with HIV AIDS, emergency responses in crisis, enabling access to clean and safe water, ensuring the welfare and protection of children, post-conflict rehabilitation of victims, to supporting most vulnerable members of community improve their livelihood interventions and projects that fulfill the three pillars of world vision advocacy humanitarian emergency affairs and development <laughs>